I'm going to debrief the energy cycles work examples uh, in the worksheet which I've given out uh, last week. I've kind of mentioned uh, question one, but I thought that for, for those of you who didn't quite catch it, uh, I'm just going to uh, redo it. Okay, so um, you are given this particular uh, uh, reaction. So you have um, four CH3 NH and H2. So this is uh, a methyl hydrazine. And then uh, reacting with dinitrogen uh, tetroxide. And in a process, it gives you uh, four CO2, 9N2, and 12 H2O. Um, you are supposed to determine the enthalpy change of, uh, of the, the enthalpy change of this particular reaction. So I'm just going to annotate it with delta HR. Okay. So as per all enthalpy uh, change uh, calculation, uh, when you are working on hash cycle, I think it's good to copy down the equation again. So I'm going to just going to write it over here. So it says four CH three uh, NH NH two. Uh, liquids. Remember, state symbols are of utmost importance, so it's important for you guys to include the state symbols um, in your uh, equations. Uh, for CO2 gas uh, plus 9N2 gas plus 12H2O gas. Okay, over here. And um, maybe I'll just use a highlighter here. Take note that the nitrogen here exists as the element. Um, this is pretty important. I'm going to explain to you um, a little bit why later. Okay, I'm now going to write down the enthalpy change of formation uh, of the of the reactants as well as the product. Uh, why do I do that? Because the information given to me um, in the questions uh, revolve around enthal enthalpy change of formation. Okay, so uh, I will first uh, begin by writing the product. The reason why I begin writing the product is because uh, as I highlighted uh, earlier on, right? The product side actually include um, elemental nitrogens. So I thought that um, that will simplify the matter a little bit more. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to write down the enthalpy change of formation of the product. So I, I'll begin with CO2. So I'll have uh, four carbons. Elemental state of carbon is solid. Uh, I'm given um, that total of eight oxygen, so four O2 uh, gases. Yeah. And take note that uh, you are forming uh, four moles of CO2. So you need to take um, 394 multiplied by 4. Uh, this is a very common mistake uh, made by beginning students. They forgot to multiply by the relevant coefficient. So I'm just going to copy over the N2 over here. So this N2. And um, for convenience, I'm just going to highlight it in, or, um, in yellow as well. Okay. Some... Um, Sometimes students like to write like this, okay, arrow over there and put zero, but I think personally it's a bit confusing, so I'd rather not write it out, so I'll just uh, leave it as it is. Okay, uh, next I'm going to write it for 12H2O, so in 12H2O, there's 12 equivalent of H2 gas, and then um, 6O2 gas, okay, and in the process, um, it's negative 2.2 for one more of uh, H2O, and I have 12 in total, so I need to multiply this by 12. Okay, and if you scrutinize the whole equation on the right-hand side, right, I'm going to just circle in yellow. Okay, you notice that in terms of material balance, it should be balanced. Okay, as I said, it should be balanced because we worked it out uh, carefully earlier on. And then right now, I'm going to try to balance the left-hand side, which involves the enthalpy change of formation of methyl hydrazine as well as N2O4, which I'm going to circle in green. Okay, um, you will notice that if we have done everything correctly, they should be balanced. And that is why I can confidently write the arrow this way. Oops, sorry, just going. Yeah, that's why I can confidently write the arrow this way. And then I'll take um, minus... Uh, oh, sorry, plus 53 multiplied by 4. And then over here, I will take um, minus 20 times 5. Okay, some of you might not be very convinced because you'll be thinking, hey, you, I mean, you, you, you have not um, done any calculation. How are you so confident that they are balanced? Okay, so let us try to look at, um, um, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, just some elements um, to, to, to ensure to assure everyone that we are on the right track. Okay, so let's take a look at the top. Uh, maybe I'll choose nitrogen. So we have 5 times 2 nitrogens here. So that's 10 nitrogens in total. 
Okay, then uh, over here I have one nitrogen here and one nitrogen here. So that's two nitrogens times four. So it's eight plus 10, 18 nitrogens. Do I have 18 nitrogens as shown here? Yes, I do have 18 nitrogens, right? Yep, okay. And then the next thing I probably want to do is uh, maybe I'll count the H's. Okay, so I have um, three H's here, one H here, and two H here. That gives me a total of six H. Six times four is 24. Do I have 24 H? Yes, you can see that I have 24 H. Okay, again, if you're not convinced, let's do one more. Let's do oxygen. So I have four oxygens here times five. That's 20 oxygens. So do I have 20 oxygens here? I have a total of 8 here, I have a total of 12 here. So 12 plus 8 is 20. Yes, so it's definitely balanced. Okay, so uh, after I've done all this, I think the final thing I need to do is to um, calculate, right? So remember, I wanted to go from left to right and down each change of reaction. And when I calculate, I do it like vectors. So I'm going to just going to go down and then I go up, so in a clockwise fashion. Okay, so when I try to calculate, uh, remember, whatever arrow that is opposite in my direction, I will need to reverse the sign. So the enthalpy change of reaction here is simply uh, minus 53 times 4, okay, plus 20 times 5, minus 394 times 4, minus 242 times 12. Okay. If I've successfully calculated that, that should give me minus 45.92 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and um, following this calculation, you might uh, be interested in, remember, there's a short, um, that there's a formula that um, uh, that's given in the, in the lecture notes. Okay, the I think the formula... Um, uh, said something like, oh, you know, if you are given a chemical equation and um, you are provided with the enthalpy change of formation of the reactants and the product, so technically you can say that the enthalpy change of this particular reaction is the summation of the enthalpy change of formation of the products, okay, including the relevant stoichiometric coefficient, okay, minus of the summation of the enthalpy change of formation of the reactants. Okay, so technically we are doing that, and I hope you understand why, because if we are going in a clock, an anti-clockwise fashion, right, essentially we are summing up the reactant in a reverse way, so that is why we have the minus summation of formation of the reactants, and then we are just adding the, pro the formation of product, so that's why we have it here, over here. Okay, so I'll leave it up to you. Remember, um, in the in the in the part where I went through the essential points in the lecture notes, I mentioned that if you wish to memorize the formula, you can go ahead. Uh, if not, you can draw a cycle because I think a cycle represents a more fundamental approach in problem solving. Okay, next I'm going to work on question two. Okay, which um talks about the uh enthalpy change of formation of ethane. In this case, so uh, I'm supposed to calculate the enthalpy change of formation of ethane given the enthalpy change of combustion of the individual uh, elements as well as uh, ethane itself. So first, I need to write a balance equation. So the balance equation actually involves um, carbon and hydrogen. So, uh, so ethane is actually C2H6, which exists as the gas. And then uh, this is at the enthalpy change of formation. And uh, okay, I'm going to have two carbons here. Okay. And plus uh, three equivalent of hydrogen gas. Okay. And that gives me uh, in blue the enthalpy change of formation of ethane. But remember, the information given to us uh, is the enthalpy change of combustion. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the lectures and tutorials, you need to artificially add in oxygen. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. Um, but before I do that, of course, I need to write a balance equation involving uh, the reaction of ethane uh, to give me uh, carbon dioxide gas and water. Okay, so um, I'm just going to write down here 2 CO2 gas plus 3H2O liquid. Okay, I'm just going to arrow down and I'm just going to copy in the value as well. That's negative 1560. Okay, then 
After I've done that, I'm going to calculate the number of oxygen I need here. So that will be 2 times 2, uh, 4, and then uh, 4 plus 3, uh, 7 oxygen. So that means I will need 7 half O2. And if you recall what we did earlier on, if I add 7 half O2 here, I need to add 7 over half O2 on the left. Okay, and this will comfortably provide me with the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon okay to give me co2 and this i will need negative 393 times 2 as well as the enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen gas so i will need negative 286 times 3 and am i confident that this will actually balance off uh, and gives me the required number of oxygen definitely because I'm getting the same product as the enthalpy change or combustion of ethane. Okay, and um, using the same thought process, because enthalpy change of formation goes from left to right, I'm going to add up my numbers in an anti-clockwise fashion. Okay, so in order to add up the numbers in an anti-clockwise fashion, all I need to do is to write it out this way. Enthalpy change of formation is equals to negative 393 times 2, negative 286 times 3, and minus minus 1560 and I'm, end up, I'm going to end up with negative 84 kilojoules per mole okay so remember the same rules apply uh, when you are adding up the numbers uh, if the arrow goes in the same direction you leave the sign if it goes in the opposite direction you reverse the sign okay and of course over here if you recall from your lecture notes there's a there, there is a formula that goes something like oh if you are given the enthalpy change of combustion of the reactor and the product and you are trying to find out the enthalpy change of reaction you can simply just sum up the reactant formation of combustion of the reactant minus of the uh, summation of combustion for the product something along those lines but uh, as I said to you earlier on there isn't a need for you to memorize any of these formula as long as you are very comfortable in drawing your cycles okay so the next part I'm going to discuss will be Question three. Question three actually involves two things. Um, one is actually a cycle and the other one is the energy level diagram. So I think uh, it's worth discussing as well. Okay, so um, uh, as I mentioned to you in the, in, the, in, the, in the lectures, some students prefer energy level diagram, some students prefer cycle. But most importantly, you need to look at what the question asks uh, of you. If you're asked to draw a cycle and you provide an energy level diagram, you'll be marked wrong. If you're asked an energy level diagram and you provide a cycle, you'll be marked wrong as well. Okay, But you'll only be marked wrong for the technique. The final answer, you'll still be given credit. Okay. However, if you're asked to use Hess law, okay, if you're asked to use Hess law without um, mentioning whether you should be using an energy cycle or energy level diagram, technically, you can use either one. It's really at your, to your own, at your own comfort level. Okay, so now um, I'm just, okay, okay, right now um, the question asked me to determine or calculate the enthalpy change of formation of N2O5, so I'm, again I'm going to write a balance equation, so you know that writing balance equation is inevitable in any of these questions. So N2O5 um, is a gas here, so N2O5 gas, okay, I'm just going to write a long arrow, so that's the enthalpy change of formation, okay, so I'm going to have N2 gas plus 5 over 2 oxygen gas. Okay, so let me try to look at, or let us try to look at the information given to us. So I think in the first equations, in the first equation, I'm, uh, we are given um, the reaction between N2 and O2 to give, to give me NO. Okay, so I'm just going to arrow down and then I just put um, 180. Okay, so uh, I'm going to N2. Uh, sorry, just going to D. Okay, I'm going to get 2 NO gas. Okay, however, remember that in this particular uh, question, or in this particular equation, I'm only if using one equivalent of oxygen. Okay, so I will have leftover of 3 over 2 oxygen. Okay, so this is the important part uh, that I will need all of you to take note of. Okay, this is the important portion. Okay, I'm going to have some leftover. I'm just going to carry on. Okay, and of course, uh, in equation 2 here, okay, I'm just going to erase this off here. Yeah, in equation 2, uh, 
time one equivalent of NO react with half equivalent of O2 to, to give me um, one equivalent of NO2. Okay, but I have two equivalent of NO. So I'm going to react one equivalent of O2 to give me two equivalent of NO2. And then because I'm using one equivalent of O2, I'll be left with half O2 gas. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this as well to let you take note that I'm actually tracking the change in the number of moles of oxygen. Okay, and the coefficient is important. Two equivalent, so it's negative 57 times 2. Okay, so remember, it's kilojoules per mole of one unit of the equation. And then I'm going to complete this, okay, by looking at the third equation, and this will give me negative 55. Yeah, so again, um, I'm going to sum them up to obtain the anti of formation. So in this case, clockwise, anti-clockwise as well, anti-clockwise. Okay, so if I'm going to do the mathematics, the enthalpy change of formation, it will be uh, positive 180, negative 57 times 2, negative 55. Okay, and this will give me positive 11 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so it's an endothermic reaction. Okay, yep. Okay, how about drawing the energy level diagram? Um, like, uh, what do we need to take note of? Uh, if you if you recall, to draw the energy level diagram, the most important thing is actually the vertical axis. Okay, the vertical axis. So I'm going to write down the vertical axis first. So I'm going to write down the units. So energy is in terms of kilojoules per mole. Okay, and remember in the energy um, level diagram, what is most important is actually the zero point. So in this case, I'm going to put my zero point over here. Okay, the zero point defines the elements. So in this case, my element consists of nitrogen gas and five half oxygen. Okay, one of the things that a lot of students uh, um, had, I mean, including our seniors in the past, they were, they were concerned that, oh, you know, like for an energy level diagram, we are not sure if the final outcome is going to be exo or endo. So uh, does it really matter? You, 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 you know, that kind of question is actually quite common. Uh. Okay, I mean, I don't have an easy answer for that, but um, uh, you can always do this. I mean, um, you can always assume that it's either exo or endo. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so of course, in this case, we know that it's, en it's endothermic. Okay, but that's based on high side. But um, let's say in actual fact, you don't know if it's uh, exo or endo. So what are you going to do? Okay, so assume that I don't know. Okay, assume that I don't know. So I assume... Uh, and, and I thought that, okay, it may be um, exothermic. Okay, so I'm just going to point my arrow down. Remember that in the energy level diagram, when you point down, the sign should be negative, correct? So I'm assuming that it's exo. Okay, so I'm going to write N205 over here. Okay, um, I'm just going to complete the cycle the usual way. Okay, so what do I mean by the usual way? Okay, so I'm just going to go up again. So it's 180, okay, exactly the same thought process, 2NO gas plus three half oxygen gas okay and then i'm going to uh, again move down again so i'm going to move down um minus 57 times two so uh, again two and o2 uh, gas plus half o2 gas okay so um same thing same thought process just going to highlight the oxygen here so going to highlight oxygen highlight oxygen okay everything else is the same and then um Yep, and then I'm just going to point my arrow all the way down, and then this is uh, minus 55. Okay, something along those lines. Okay, now, um, remember this. If you do everything correctly, okay, the, the summation will give you the same outcome. Okay, so what do I, what do I mean the same outcome? The, meaning, um, whatever you get will reflect uh, the, the actual enthalpy change. So even if you point your arrow in the wrong direction, uh, in our case here, uh, when you actually sum everything up, that, that means that okay, to sum everything up, you need to go through like this, the clockwise way. Okay, When you sum everything up, uh, 180 minus 57 times 2 minus 55, you will still end up with minus 11 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so it doesn't mean that when you point down, you will miraculously end up with a negative number. No. So once you get a minus 11 kilojoules per mole, you can do two things. Number one, you leave it, and then you'll be marked correct. Okay, number two, if you are really, really, um, 
you really want everything to be perfectly beautiful, etc., right? Well, I mean, what you can do is you can just erase this. You can just erase the bottom portion. Okay, you can really erase the bottom portion. And then you'll be a little bit artificial about it. Just put like that. Just change. And now picture of formation and then add to 5, uh, guess. Yeah, you can do this. Minus 55. And that's it. Yeah, so I'll leave it to you. I mean, I mean, you're not going to penalize because remember this. Whether you are using an energy level diagram or um, energy cycle, right? These are tools to help you get the final answer. You shouldn't be letting these tools rule over you. Okay, so most importantly, use them um, at least at the intermediate or even the expert level to help you problem solve, not the other way around. Okay, do not be detained by these tools. Okay, that's the point I'm trying to say. Okay, next, um, I'm going to move to the final one, which is uh, the bond Hebel cycle. Okay, um, we have not really covered bond Hebel cycle in our tutorials, uh, even, uh, but um, kind of mentioned it in the, in the lectures as well. So uh, for those of you who have done a relevant tutorial question, I think um, this will not be um, new to you. Or if you already developed the intermediate level of understanding of, uh, of uh, hair cycle, energy cycle, etc., right? Um, you should be able to uh, appreciate uh, how to draw a bond Hebel cycle uh, diagram well, okay? So I'm just going to um, illustrate how we can go about answering this question. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, again, is the same thing, similar to drawing an energy level diagram, okay? So the first thing I need to do is I need to write out the vertical axis. So energy in terms of kilojoules per mole. Okay, so, um, okay, so I'm going to draw a really long arrow downwards. Okay, if there's not enough space, I'm just going to extend it. Okay, and then... Um, Again, what's the most important thing is actually the zero point. Okay. The zero point is where I'm going to write the element. Okay, so what element am I looking at? In this case, uh, magnesium, solid, and oxygen. Some of you might ask, why is it so important to write the zero point for the bond Hebel cycle for... Um, 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 ionic compound, etc. Well, um, the reason is uh, usually you'll be you'll either be asked to calculate the enthalpy change of formation of the uh, ionic compound itself, or um, you'll be given that particular data, and then you will somehow uh, go from the element all the way to the gaseous ions and then find out the lattice energy. So whatever the case is, um, the zero point defines the elemental state. Okay, then um, next I'm going to write down the uh, enthalpy change of formation of the uh, ionic compound. Well, enthalpy change of formation of ionic compound is almost always uh, exothermic. Yeah, so in this case, pointing your arrow downwards, uh, it makes a bit more sense. Okay, so in this case, you don't really need to worry about it. Okay, and then um, the very, very top points over here, okay, I should be defining my lattice energy. And in this case, it's negative 38, 42 kilojoules per mole. And I'm looking at gaseous magnesium cations as well as gaseous oxide anions. Okay, and remember what we mentioned um, in the in the lecture um, in the video. I mentioned that after you have write, after you have written out these three components, right? What you need to do is to link them up. Okay, it's the linking up that uh, most of the time students find it challenging. So now I'm going to link up for you. So first, um, we are given data such as the atomization enthalpy of magnesium. Okay, so uh, enthalpy of atomization is therefore very important. So uh, 148 here, I'm going to get Mg gaseous. But we are not given the enthalpy change of atomization for oxygen. Well, fret not, because oxygen is O2, right? So uh, we have bond energy data of oxygen in our data booklet. That's 496. So 102, if you overcome one equivalent of OO double bond, you're going to end up with two equivalent of oxygen gas. But in this case, I only, I only need one equivalent of oxygen gas. Am I right? Why do I need only one equivalent of oxygen gas? Because one more of MgO only have one oxygen. So that's why I only need one equivalent of oxygen atoms in this case, gaseous oxygen atoms. So I'm just going to take the buoyancy data, 496, 
divide by 2. Okay, then um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, form the gaseous ions. So in this case, um, Mg2 plus gaseous plus 2 electrons plus oxygen here. Okay, how do I form the gaseous ions? Well, I mean, I am given the um, first ionization energy of magnesium and the first ionization and, and the second ionization energy of magnesium in my data booklet. So what I need to do now is to flip over my data booklet and find a value. So that's 736 for the first IE and 1450 for the second IE. Okay, and then um, I'm given the first electron affinity of oxygen as well as the second electron affinity of oxygen. Okay, so student asks, do I need to do that one by one or can I combine them? Okay, so technically, if you want to do it well, you have to do it one by one. Okay, so let's do it one by one. So I'm going to get Mg2 plus, uh, plus electrons plus O minus gas. That's the first electron affinity. That's negative 140. And then the second electron affinity is endothermic, that's 798. Okay, some of you will be asking, what do I mean by, what do I mean by you have to do it? Well, well, I mean, I think showcasing step by step um, is important as a beginning student. But of course, after you become a little bit more experienced, you can actually just go out straight away by just summing up um, negative 140 and uh, 798. That's an exothermic value. But of course, as of now, I, I would suggest you just do that one by one, okay? So uh, there's a rule of thumb that, you know, the same ener energetic term, right, you can actually lump them up, okay? Which I think you kind of observe uh, what I've been doing so far. You see, I lump up the enthalpy, the atomization enthalpy. I, I lump up the IEs, okay? Of course, you can lump up the electron affinity as well, if you wished, okay? And let me just um, point to you one... Um, very common mistake that students face, and I hope that uh, none of you will make this mistake, is that after you have done your IE, right, a lot of students forget to write the electrons. Okay, remember this. And of course, another mistake that students often make, I think I've shared in the video uh, in Energetics, is that um, many a times the students uh, don't really care about the sequence of ionization energy and electron affinity. So they tend to perform electron affinity first, then IE. Okay, remember you can't do that because you can't have you can't gain electrons without the electrons to be there in the first place. So you need to lose the electron first. That's why electron affinity must come after ionization energy. Okay, so after you have done this, I think the summation uh, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be a difficult problem. Oops, sorry. I think I should be using this. Um, yep, okay. So uh, once you sum them up, uh, everything else is easy. So uh, the end up chain of formation. Okay, so in this case, I just need to go like this. Up and then down and then up again and then all the way down. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna write one for the eight plus four nine six over two plus seven thirty six plus one four five zero um, minus uh, one forty um, minus sorry plus seven nine eight and minus 3842. And then I'm just going to punch my calculator and then I'll end up with negative 602 kilojoules per mole. Please ensure that um, they all add up to the value given here. Okay, um, do not assume that uh, once you can get all these values, right, you can add them up comfortably because sometimes uh, uh, as much as we, we don't want it to happen, sometimes students find it difficult to add them up for some reason. Okay, so make sure that you know how to add the values up. Okay, so yep, that's the end and see you around in school.